I didn't know that this, this really, people really did this. This is wrong. Sorry. A local mom has a warning for anyone who goes online to look for tickets to events here in the Valley. Make sure you don't fall victim too. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker sat down with the mom of three to see how she unknowingly paid almost $300 for tickets that actually cost much less. There's a lot of families that can't afford things, you know, simple things, let alone something fun. Like any other mom, Brenda Flynn enjoys doing nice things for her daughters. So you can imagine her shock when she found out the tickets she purchased for the PRCA Championship Rodeo weren't legit. The name on the tickets isn't even my name. It's somebody else's name on the tickets that they're trying to give me. <laughs> Flynn got online and purchased tickets through box office ticket sales, but didn't realize that until after the purchase. I typed in Fargo Dome when I clicked on the Fargo Dome thing. We did the same thing and, sure enough, ended up on the same site. Fargo Dome General Manager Rob Sobolik says this is an all-too-common story. Fargo Dome may come up first, FargoDome.com. Likely there are going to be a couple of ticketing sites. And again, it, you need to be careful because those will have the little ad, the little yellow ad box next to them. I called box office ticket sales to inquire about their rodeo ticket pricing, and here's the response I got. The lowest ones are going to run you 49 uh, better seats are about 75, and then those premiums will run your 125. Which is significantly higher than what the tickets are advertised as on the Fargo Dome site. Not only are they overpriced, but Sobolik says they usually don't work once you arrive to the venue. Though it's too late for Flynn and her family, she hopes her situation will help save someone else from having to go through the same thing. I'm not the kind of person that would do this to someone or accept it. <laughs> And just let it go and be like, oh, well, lesson learned. No, no, this shouldn't happen. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. <laughs> Flynn says her bank is going to refund the money, but it's going to take some time. She says she hopes anyone looking to buy tickets will pay more attention to the website and not become a victim like her. The Fargo Dome says going through a venue website is the only way to make sure that the tickets you're buying are real. Now, this story came to us through our whistleblower hotline. If you need help uncovering anything in your community, give us a call, 701-237-6576. Do so and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and do our best to get to the bottom of it. Opiate overprescribing is a key driver in drug overdose deaths, according to the CDC. It released voluntary guidelines for primary care doctors saying go slow and use fewer painkillers. Addiction and overdose are national problems and ones we have seen locally too. I would like to say that physicians had had nothing to do with it, but I think we have. We have, uh, we know that we have, uh, when people are prescribed uh, pain medications too much or too often, that puts them at risk for overuse and addiction. Uh, extra pills get diverted and picked up and used by other people and can contribute to addiction. While the CDC's new guidelines are just suggestions, Dr. Griffin says we'll see an impact in our community. Noticing a bad smell in the FM area over the past couple of days? Mm -hmm. Well, that smell is stronger in some parts than others. Earlier today, we told you that the smell was coming from the West Fargo Lagoons. Fargo and Moorhead also have sewage lagoons that are contributing. But there is a tool that the health department uses to make sure the levels don't become a problem. Valley News Team's Giovanna Seamich tells us more about this stinkometer. The smell over Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead has almost become a rite to spring passage. You know, usually, usually like um, you get it for about two, three weeks, you know, in the spring and it gets better. The North Dakota Health Department has a tool. It's called a centometer and it measures how bad the smell gets. It's used to check odor, um, you know, whether or not a, a place or a person is in compliance with the odor regulations of the state. Not just anyone can operate this device. There is a no certification process needed. But before you get your nose out of the joint, it's relatively simple to use. You have to form a seal around your nose, you breathe through it, um, you can set the different ports. And when the centimeter is used, two people have to use it to verify the level of the smell. The experts say the smell will last at least a few more weeks. Kangas says so far, the smell has not reached 7 OCU on the centimeter, meaning 
Although it is a nuisance, it is not a concern for the health department. If we get complaints, we will go out there. Um, first, we'll use our real noses, and if it still smells, then we'll get out the centimeter and, you know, keep checking it. And if it's, you know, you want to do it, you know, it depends on wind and temperature and all those different things. Because when it comes to smells, a nose knows best. Yovana Simic, Valley News Live. If you notice a strong or unusual smell in or outside your home, the health department suggests that you call the city or your local health department to help figure out the problem. There's a proposal in the state of North Dakota to raise the tax on tobacco products, and if it passes, you'll see it on a November ballot. Supporters already started collecting some of the required 13,000-plus signatures. Valley News Team's Natalie Parsons has our story. North Dakota has not increased its tobacco tax since 1993. And now the Raise It for Health North Dakota Coalition thinks it's time. The proposed tobacco tax will raise the tax on cigarettes from 44 cents per pack up to $2.20 per pack. I'm going to have to pay more if I want to continue, but um, I'm hoping that it might deter me too because it's something I've wanted to quit for a long time. The ultimate goal for this tobacco tax increase is to hopefully decrease youth smoking by 20 percent and prevent 5,800 youth from ever starting. It's not going to prevent all of them, but I, I think it's going to get some of them and I, it, every little bit helps. The coalition has already started getting signatures on this initiated measure. The petition needs exactly 13,452 signatures in order to appear on the November 8th ballot. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. I, you know, it'll, it'll affect me, but um, as long as it helps somebody, I, I, yeah, I'd probably sign it. In Fargo, Natalie Parsons, Valley News Live. The proposed tobacco tax is estimated to bring in over $100 million in new revenue to North Dakota with plans to go toward many health care services. Today, President Obama revealed his choice to become the next justice on the U.S. Supreme Court. He is Chief Judge Merrick Garland of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, sometimes known as the second highest court in the land. While some say his nomination is setting the stage for a huge constitutional showdown, Senate Republicans say there won't be a showdown because they will not allow a hearing, let alone a confirmation vote. A bill that's moving through the Minnesota legislature would allow terminally ill patients with only six months to live to be prescribed life-ending medication. A state Senate committee took up the bill today that would allow for physician-assisted death in Minnesota. Two doctors would be required to sign off on a terminal patient's state of mind before prescribing life-ending medication, and the patient would have the final say over whether to use that medication. North Dakota Democrats have a candidate for governor, and he wasted no time going after workforce, safety, and insurance. Representative Marvin Nelson from Rolla, North Dakota, served on the House Industry, Business, and Labor Committee. Nelson says there are a couple things wrong with workforce, safety, and insurance, and adds there needs to be some tweaking and zeroed in on the people who run it. Nelson was first elected to the legislature in 2010 and was re-elected in 2014.